It's been almost three years since ChatGPT sudden rise to popularity scared everyone into thinking they'll soon be replaced by AI. Today I want to have a look at how things are going and what the future forecasts say. Since our collective attention span is decreasing by the day, let me get my most important message out right away. I think we're underestimating the pace of AI progress and it's going to hit big in the next several years. It's amazing how quickly everyone has become used to the new reality. You can now generate images, write code, cheat on homework, or launch a startup and go bankrupt all before breakfast. What a time to be alive! If you think people have been overestimating AI progress rather than underestimating it, well, you're thinking of a small but vocal minority. Here's an interesting fact that'll give you something to think about. A study from late last year asked 67 experts how long it'd take large language models to pass certain thresholds of expertise, such as that they outperform virologists on bio threat questions. Their so-called super forecasters collectively estimated that this had happened by 2034. In fact, it happened in early 2025. This means these super forecasters underestimated AI progress by a whopping 10 years, even though they had the tools in front of them. You might say, some forecasters they are. Maybe ultra forecasters would be wrong only by 20 years. I hear you, but my point is that there's a real risk that we're severely underestimating this because we've somehow gotten used to it. A rather scary future scenario came just recently from the AI Future Project, a new nonprofit forecasting the future of AI. In a nutshell, they predict that the impact of superhuman AI over the next decade will be enormous, exceeding that of the Industrial Revolution. They have a very specific timeline up to 2027. By mid-2025, we're supposed to see stumbling AI agents, which, well, wasn't hard to predict. They predict that AI training will get even more expensive. That's almost certainly correct. In mid-2026, the Chinese will come and steal all the training results from the Americans. By late 2026, the stock market has gone up 30%. By early 2027, we'll have agents that continuously learn. The Chinese come to steal that as well. And then things really take off. By mid-2027, coding has been fully automated and AI starts to improve itself. In August, the reality of the intelligence explosion hits the White House, presumably while the European Commission is arguing over a regulatory strategy framework for an intelligence tax. In September 2027, AI does all of science, is badly misaligned. By October, everyone's in full panic. And by Halloween, all clocks will strike 10 to 2. Well, that was cheerful. But let's look at some more down-to-earth predictions about the estimated impact of AI on the GDP. The investment firm Goldman Sachs recently noted that AI has surpassed even the previous most optimistic expectations in terms of model use and tech sector investment. While there have not yet been any major impacts on the labor market, they expect that AI will start having a measurable impact impact on US GDP in 2027, so around the time that the world ends if you trust the previous prediction. McKinsey likewise reports that the integration of AI into business has been proceeding swiftly in the past two years, though for now that's mostly in areas like marketing and sales as well as IT, which makes sense because those are the areas in which we can't tell whether anything's working anyway. The World Economic Forum believes that anything AI, robotics and and software development is the biggest productivity contributor for the time to come and will generate a lot of jobs, whereas it's not the right time to start working at a post office. The consulting firm PricewaterhouseCoopers has revised their prediction for the estimated impact on the global GDP. They previously said plus 14% by 2030, now they say plus 15% by 2035. So it seems there were some too over optimistic. And then we have a guy from MIT who says 
discuss of the impact of AI will be non-trivial but modest, which is the academic way of saying, I don't know either, but I don't want to be left out of the discussion. What are we to make of all this? I think the high speed to doom scenarios are unrealistic because they implicitly assume that we'll get to AGI using essentially the same models as we currently use. It seems likely to me instead that companies will have to completely start over again and I suspect that the intelligent systems will become increasingly fragile and difficult to duplicate. That is to say, I think it'll take more than two years, five to ten maybe. But I think that we're indeed at the edge of a remarkable transformation of the world, which, depending on your perspective, is either exciting or terrifying, but either way, a good excuse to have some cheese. One of the biggest problems with news today is that you don't just get the facts, you get someone's opinion about the facts. If you find that as annoying as I do, there's a solution to this problem. Have a look at Ground News. Ground News is a news platform that compares how a story is being reported by different outlets across the political spectrum. They collect and summarize news from all over the world and give you a quick summary together with a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Take for example this recent story about the Senate panel that rejected Trump's cuts to the NIH. You can see at one glance that this was basically not covered by the political right. Ground News also gives you this quick overview, then you have a factuality rating for each news item, it tells you whom the media outlets are owned by and where the news has appeared. And it's not like they do only US news. You can, for example, switch to EU news here. They also help you get out of your information bubble with this feature they call blind spot. It shows you news that has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. Ground news has really improved my news reading a lot. If you want to try it too, use my link or QR code because that'll give you a 40% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. It's an easy way to do something for yourself and for this channel. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.